taking charge of this one. And she just looks over and has a quiet word there with Zoe Harrison. Harrison was missing last week for England. She picked up a little bit of an injury. She said as soon as she'd done it in training, she knew. Slightly nervous scan, but everything okay. Ready for her to come and take on that 10 jersey this week. Good to go. Perfect. Well, Holly Davidson has been given the okay. She does a quick count up of numbers. And the final match in round two of the Women's Six Nations is underway as England chase deep down there into that Italian 22. Stefan manages to feed the forwards. Italy had a good result in the Six Nations back in 2019 where they managed to finish second. They've been fourth the last couple of years though as they try and exit down the side. And England no interest at all in a line out. That was a big risky pass. Cabea's there, having to tidy things up. No, I'm happy with the pass. Hunt. Was that a knock on though, Gabriel? Huge collisions already. Knock Confirmation on. it was a knock on. We'll restart with an Italian scrum. I think England's shown their intent early doors, like you say, Italy have relieved pressure, good kick by Ragoni, found touch, but actually as soon as Ellie Kildon's got hands on ball, she wants to move away, England are going to want to play with that tempo that they found was really successful for them in the autumn. Good stability. Yep. Well, last week, Italy travelled to France, where they, it was a difficult scoreline for them, finishing 36-6 in favour of the French. Perhaps doesn't actually reflect the amount of time Italy had on the ball or the opportunities they had they First couldn't finish. We need to get this right, OK? Pre-engaged on this side. Keep the space. Stop. A lot of focus in the front row at the moment, particular on uh, Harlequin's Shauna Brown, who's at tight head for England today. She wasn't involved in the autumns, and the head coach, Simon Middleton, he was very open in saying he wanted her to go away and work on her scrum. And that is what she has done. Bind! Hold, hold, hold. Set! Big penalty for England early on. Great work by Shauna Brown there. And I think obviously her and Vicky Cornborough, you know, they would have played a lot of club rugby together. But that just a bit of confidence, showing good pictures to Holly Davis and the referee and getting their rewards. Big touch finder then by Harrison. This was the scrum. You can see Cornborough there just on the near side of the screen. a long way out for England to try and maul this the whole way but there's Abby Ward there the face that's popped up that took it in the air just directing proceedings it's a penalty advantage then to England little dink through there from Harrison didn't quite come off she still held on to it back for the penalty side entry number seven on the 15. Natasha Hunt, they're thinking about going fast. And she will do that all game. I think for me, like you say, we've, we've started to see a bit of intent about England, what they want to do. You know, we're, England are going to the line out early, gone straight to Abbey Ward, starting to get that kind Thank of you. mall formation set early. Like you say, a long way out, 20, 20 odd metres there. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if we see a lot more from that. Lark Davis throws in vice captain for England today. This time it's Galligan who goes up. She's at the back. This is strong from England very early. They scored like this against Scotland. That one's down though. Hunt passes out wide. There's no one there, it's McKenna. England score, not even four minutes on the clock. Well worked and Sarah McKenna completely unmarked. What I really enjoyed about that try is obviously not the, um, the mauling start to it. But if you look at Sarah McKenna's movement, how late she comes, yep. originally she started open field. Actually, she's identified Italy, have put nobody on that blind side. She goes really okay. late. She's given Mo Hunt a little call, and it's just a, a 2v1 okay. on the edge, picking off one of the forwards. Sarah McKenna, perhaps more seen these days at fullback, but happy to do a good job on the wing as well. 
Simon Middleton endlessly talking about all the different positions he wants his players to be able to take on when it comes to World Cup, depending on numbers. Harrison then with the conversion. And successful for her on the first occasion. And that will give her confidence. Huge confidence. You know, ideally as a fly half or a, a goal kicker, you want that somewhere at the front of the line out, but the touchline. But as we look at this try again, what a great little bit of vision from Mohun. And that's what you're going to get from somebody with her experience, you know, that actually there might have been a set call. She's seen something different. McKenna's worked really hard to get into that, and it, and it is an easy walk in. Italy with the restart. They haven't really had any ball yet. It's all been about England. Hunt down the line. Ward is on the ball. Rowland manages to find support in her shoulder in the form of Aitchison. Holly Aitchison was wearing 12 back. In front, last week. <laughs> Taken clearly then in the end by Ostino Minuzzi. But big pressure flying up from England. Where? Was it offside? Offside, number 11. With well, a warning there against 11. Sarah McKenna. And this is a, a really nice platform now for the Italians. And you can just see there the cool customer that is Rigoni straight up ready to go. Yeah, I think probably a little bit disappointing from England there. Um, referee has tried to communicate just a whole England haven't. And, and like we say, Italy yeah. now have a line out five metres out. But Tony, who's going to put the ball in, plays her rugby for Wren in France, and that's just slightly overshot. Cabea, she's doing a lot of tidying up Cabea at the moment. Probably happier to tidy up Italian mistakes than English ones. Good take in the air by Magatti. Stefan is there, but she's got caught. So there was no scrum half. Push back there by Guy. Stefan. Madir. Batoni. First player. Almost second guessing herself there, Stefan, and gets caught. Push backwards. Big hits there going in on Tunisi. Big hand there. It's Poppy Cleal who made this opportunity for England. She read that really well at the breakdown. Unfortunately, that's a bit of a mistake there. Ball gone straight out of play. But England did well there to get the ball back. Yeah, and they really pressured it at the breakdown, didn't they? Italy a bit high when they're arriving as their first player. Every opportunity that England are getting to counter Rook, they're doing, and it's just slow an Italian ball. Stolen ball by England. Hunt has it. Harrison. Cleal, Roland, down the line, eventually goes to kill Dunn. Here comes the fullback. McKenna comes back inside, looks for the support. Hunt, Harrison. Big hit going in there on Poppy Cleal by Melissa Batoni. No. They really want to slow her down before she builds up any kind of speed. Oh, here comes Matthews. Strong work, good meters made there by the Worcester player, but pushed out to the far side. Is there space for Cornbra? Afi to play out on the wing. Gallagher back inside Harrison. Lovely link play by England. Cabea. Aitchison, Cleal. Out the back door, kill done. McKenna. Still McKenna. Play on. Taken then by the Italians. That was made by Sillery. It's Magatti who takes it in. Well, England managed to hold on to their ball then. We'll restart with a scrum 
and there was some lovely handling in there. There really was, and I think what England are, are doing really well is the use of their forwards in the middle, you know, they're getting gain line, it's a really positive carry, the speed of ball from Natasha Hunt, a breakdown, it's just making it a lot really hard for Italy to get off the line and to be able to put any pressure on there. McKenna stripped in that tackle by Italy and it is a bit of a let off there. Feet underneath you. Keep ball. Uh, keep your bind. Yes. Well, the warnings going in there after the last scrum we had that went down. Gaia Maris plays a rugby at Valsagana. It's the club that's provided most players to this Italian side. Early engagement from England. Overleaning, too much weight. Italy get away with one. They really do, and, and I'm not saying scrummaging is my specialty, but Holly Davis. Why not? Because <laughs> there's a ten hours generally standing behind in it. But I think it feels That's like that calling is really long. There's a big old delay. Well, remember this was a free kick. It wasn't a penalty, so England with ball in play. Still going out there by Thompson, still flying. Handing off Italians as she goes. Gallagher. Roland. Hunt. Brown. Good soft hands by Brown. Working with her Quinn's teammate there. Kill Dunn does well there to just get that one back up off the floor and moving again. Italy really trying to swamp the breakdown, but no when to back yes, off. Cleal. Hunt's going to snipe round the corner. She wanted someone on her shoulder. Not the cleanest pass to Roland. Gallagher. Ward. Aitchison. Good. The Italian defence is strong, it's how long they can keep it up for. To bear with McKenna. She's regained her feet, play on. Gallagher. On side eight. Aitchison just standing in that first receiver position, and big pass that way to Cornborough again, who's loving the wing work. Nope. Ward. Oh, nearly passes away, still Kabea. Really strong Premier 15's form at the moment, Kabea. Doing well with Loughborough Lightning as Kildun has it. Not quite there. Penalty to Italy, holding on the floor. Support not quite there in time, Kildun on her own, and Italy survive. What an outstanding beat of defence from Italy there. Multiple phases through England. They've gone edge to edge on them. And that bit of D right there by both Solari and I think, is it their back row? It's absolutely outstanding, you know. Great chop tackle, allowed her to get over, hands on the ball and a really easy decision for the referee to give. Nelly Kildun, former Wasp player, now at Harlequins. One of the few players in this lineup from Simon Middleton's okay, England who actually played in the same position last week when they beat Scotland in Edinburgh. England clearly chasing the sunshine wherever okay. they go in the Six Nations. Wasn't like this when you played, was it, Katie? Generally slow. <laughs> the Women's Six Nations now played in its spring window as Italy come away with it. Through the hands it goes. Sillery was there waiting. They couldn't quite get that last pass away. Stefan. Lucia Guy has taken on a lot of balls so far. Medir, lovely pass by her. Back to Guy again. This time we see Giordano, captain for the Italians today. Medir. Charge down. Can anyone name on it? That was all Cornbra. A real constant in this Middleton era, and you can see why as it's passed out to the far side. It's Lydia Thompson. <laughs> Try given and two on the board for England. What great work by Vic Hornborough there. 
the charge down itself, it's not something she's probably known for, but we've had her hanging out on the edges. She's now in the middle of the field. The work rate from, as Lou said, is it, pretty impressive. Lydia Thompson, that was her 39th try in an England shirt. Veteran of a couple of World Cup campaigns. Although England won the World Cup in 2014, unfortunately she got injured early on, but this was the, the finish. And it was great work by Hannah Rowland. You know, we've talked about her running game. It's exactly what she wants. She wants front football. She wants quick ball. She gets a great opportunity just to take the ball on. And, and when you've got somebody with the class of Lydia on the edge to finish, what more could Thanks, you need? Her. See Lydia Thompson at the back there receiving some strapping as Harrison takes this one. Well in front of the face of the goal there, so she's one from two with the boot. We saw a little bit of Zoe Harrison uh, early on there at the beginning of the programme, Katie. What kind of a character is she? I think Zoe's got the perfect makeup of a fly half, you know, she wants to lead she's got a good charisma she's very she's articulate but she won't kind of be bossed around and and that's what you need from all of your good tens it's Aitchison who sends it down the field and that has made a lovely bit of distance and the bounce has been very kind and what a great bit of territory for England as they approach the Can Italian lineup on? yeah an absolutely yeah, ferocious kick isn't that it? As a, when you restart the game, you want to kind of have that battle around halfway when you get a kick return. That's oh, yeah, put girl, in the, for me. what, just in just on their 10, I think, just inside their 10, which is a great return from England. They can now go to work again and really squeeze this Italian pack. Well, it's not the line-out perhaps Italy wanted, but they've still got it, Rigone. Simon Middleton describes the uh, Italian kicking game as unorthodox. You might pick up on that the more kicks that you see as Kildun goes through. A little bit of a hit there to Tornesi. No, you're good. We're going to restart with the white scrum, but... Yeah, yeah the woman holding onto the side of her head there, Sara Tornesi. A full Six Nations campaign. I think she's all right. Just took a little bit of a hit to the chops there. For them, they're still in position of course, this of was the ground where Italy actually qualified for the World Cup just last September. Stadio Sergio Lanfranchi, a happy hunting ground. I'm happy, yeah. You got, it was a very tight European qualifying yeah, tournament strong. and it was Italy who finished out on yes, top. Three. And that's just where uh, Giordano okay, just got that, that slight nod. You good? Yeah. Okay. Crunch! Bind! Set! Well... Certainly no early movement there from England. Comes away through Hunt. Harrison. Aitchison. Big pass to the try scorer, Thompson. The Worcester Flyer places back. Harrison. Harrison once again. Brown. She's a very strong carrier, Brown. She'll be looking to get her hands on the ball in the loose as much as she can. McKenna. Off it now. You're on, your, on your knees. Well, the warning there on to the Italians. And a chance for England, no doubt, to set up a, another lineup. She just got it a bit wrong. Has Gabriel, It's interesting, we haven't heard too much there from the referee, with Poppy Clear quite being in her ear yet. Of course, it's Poppy Clear who's the captain today for England that one not straight so Italy with the decision yeah and I think probably that 
as Poppy develops as a captain, it's going to be a time and a place. At the moment, you know, England have got a lot of momentum. They're getting a lot of decisions. There probably isn't any need from Poppy to start getting in the referees' ear. I think it's probably as the game potentially shifts and momentum changes, that's when you need your captain to really start to understand what's happening and what's changing. Well, that was the not straight at the line. You could see Rosie Gallagher there just leaning in the wrong direction to paint the right picture for the referee. Crouch! Bind! Set! Oh, England, they fancy this. Their set piece much improved under Lewis Deacon since he has come in. It's going to be an England scrum. Oh, good, your side, Gabriel. Yeah, okay. Holly Davison saying that Italy actually knocked on the ball there. And that's why we'll restart with England, though. But it, it does seem to be quite a significant difference there since Lewis Deacon has come in. Yeah, and I, and I think that's something that's really important to England and, and especially how Simon coaches and want his, wants his team to play. Set pieces, instrumental and that. We want to have a good line out and a strong scrum. Yes. And like you say, we're really seeing yeah. kind of the influence Luke, Lewis Deacon has had over the, what, the past six, nine months well, now. Receivers. Okay. Yeah. Um, see some of the more established names there in the Italian setup. Bertoni there. You okay? It's actually a PE teacher. Can play a bit of prop as well if required. The Italians, they are not professional like England. And you can see there from those stats, that's not a lot of uh, territory and possession for the Italians. It's all been about England so far. I think though, on a positive, if you're an Italian fan, to have only had 30%, England to have had 70% 70, 70 possession, but have only uh, scored 12 points, is, is a good place for Italy to be after 20 minutes of this game. Bind. Set. <laughs> Penalty for England. Number three collapse. The warning then against Lucia Guy. Gabriel? Yeah, to Nate. Not quite able to handle Vicky Cornbra at the moment. Straight away, kick for the corner. Okay, and England with another first. opportunity to try and get this line out right. Small. So here they come. Quite the machine, these forwards. That's going well, Lark Davis has it. That's over, grounded. A third try for England, scored by Lark Davis, her 12th in an England shirt. And Italy have got to what, find some answer to this rolling England machine. Uh, which colour? It's everything that we know England are about, that drive and more, like we touched on, that is, for me, is Lewis Deacon. That, that's what that man is about. He's come in to do, Thanks, he's Eric. set up a really good structure. Abby Ward's driving that mall, and Lark Davis is basically just a passenger at the back. Ball in good position. As soon as the other line, she's able to, to drop over it. But I think Thank when you. we talk about the difference in this England side to pr maybe previous Six Nations, the set piece has, be, has been huge and will continue to be instrumental. Possibly the more straightforward kick of the afternoon that Zoe Harrison has had. And that one to the left-hand side as well. And as much as it looks like England are in a commanding lead right now, these kicks is what could ultimately make the difference when it comes to big games at a World Cup. Yeah, and Zoe will be frustrated with that. Like you said, she's had two pretty difficult ones from touchlines, the first one which she got. That one probably just come out of it a little bit early after not being happy with a strike on that second kick. So I'm sure we'll see her get many more in this afternoon. But if we look back to Italy, Italy need to exit their 22. They need to get some territory in this game. Stay. Good. Ward. England have already carried over 300 metres with the ball in hand so far in this fixture. That's heavy work in that Italian sunshine. Strip, play on. Luckily, they were a little bit used to the sunshine in Edinburgh as that gets knocked on by Rigone. I felt the strip was good. It's interesting with Italy. 
because they look so strong flowing forward against the French just last week and they just can't yeah. hold on to their ball this week. And I think that's the thing that, okay. for me, it here. kills Italy at times. You know, they've got a load of flair. They've got some really talented players. Great turnover there that we've just seen. But then the next moment is just a, a loose I pass and England end up with a scrum again. And I, for me, if Italy can just cut out those unforced errors, I think we'll see a different side. Foster Hartbridge, Natasha Hunt there, just making sure that she uh, got the correct message. Crouch! Bind! Alex Matthews there, just on the side of that scrum. Set! <laughs> Penalty straight away, and Hunt is off. Hunt. No, it's unhappy. We can Harrison. Aitchison. Kill done. They're trying to hold her up on that far side. Sillery and Ostuno Minuzzi. Eventually, England get it moving. Ball is out, play on. Oh, Hunt was caught there. Strong work by Italy. I see Natasha Hunt just smiling at the bottom of that ruck. That's what Simon Milton wants. Natasha Hunt playing with a smile on her face. That's a poor take from Italy. Brown. Harrison. Not able to be taken cleanly there by Davis. Box kick in the end by Stefan. Well worked by McKenna. She knew exactly there where Rigoni was. Work by Matthews. Kill done. Straightens. Still kill done. Ward. Almost every England player that touches the ball getting over the gain no line. Way. Thompson. Still Lydia Thompson. Ward. Cornbra. All action Cornbra at the moment. Right Italy square. going over the top, and it was being oh, held. Yeah. Italy get the penalty. Again, what a great bit of Italian defence. You know, England, like you say, the momentum of which okay, England are playing with, they're winning every carry. They're leaving Italian tacklers, uh, generally two on the floor, past yeah. the ball. But again, these moments are the ones that England need to capitalise on. You can't have such great approach play if you then end up penalty and you end up having to start again from not a great kick in that situation. Yep, thanks, Origoni will be so frustrated with that effort. They haven't quite turned up yet today, the Italians. No, she's nowhere near the breakdown. Oh, there you go. Rigoni trying to make up for that last kick, flying in there on Zoe Harrison. Advantage. It's a penalty advantage to England. Number five. The warning there Number against five. Giordano no. Duca. Here. Hunt unable to go quickly. Not rolling. Five. Interesting that last breakdown, Katie, because depending on which angle you looked at it, it could have been holding from England as well. Yeah. I so think that if that Italian tackler had a cleared that uh, the tackle area there, 100%, that was going to be another uh, hold on penalty. And you've just seen Mo there, for those of you that can look read, saying that we've got to be better with our ball presentation. When you hear the word Mo, it's also Natasha Hunt. Yeah, sorry. Most of the England team call her Mo. As you see there, look at the carries from England, 41, and look at those metres made, the offloading. And here comes Matthews, they want more. Next try would be a bonus point, of course, and bonus points could mean prizes come the end of this Six Nations. Ward, Cabea. Gallagher to Brown, still Brown, she's over, can she ground? Yes! A bonus point try scored by Harlequins prop Shauna Brown. And if you're Italian, I'd start worrying about that scoreline. 
two receivers. Yeah, I mean, it all came One, for, um, from Italy well, not being able to exit their own 22. Them. You think Ragoni misses that kick, they get another opportunity. But when England forwards go to work, you know, especially the likes so of Shauna Brown, Vic Cornbra, Abby Ward, you know, that they're going to be pretty close to that trial line and it's great to see like we touched on at the beginning Shauna Brown hasn't been in England shirt in a long time and you want to see her go well she's gone away she's worked hard first scrum penalty goes to her and then she gets a lovely try as well to top that off so it, it's going a good afternoon for her so far thank you Flash white boots there of Zoe Harrison doing the job there. Two from four. She comes from a real rugby family, Zoe Harrison. Her dad actually played for Wales schools. Her brother was involved in the WASP setup. She's the one with the England caps there. <laughs> and I'm sure she let everybody know about it as well. Shauna Brown, also a qualified firefighter with Kent Fire Service. Currently a professional rugby player, though. Something that's important to so many of the women involved that they have a career to go back to. Box kick then across the field there by Stefan. Interesting. It was, but Italy are known for that. We know they have a very different approach to the kicking game, whereas England are very long and territorial or to regather. Italy are much more random in that. Straight through the guts of the park comes Sadia Kabea. Harrison. Hold one, one, three. Taken nicely out on that far side. Stefan, Madeir. Back. And they just forced the forwards there. Both Manus and Batoni were there. Almost trying to do too much, the Italians. They need to make it simple. Not on ball. Locatelli. Sillery. Madeir, Batoni. Bigoni. Muzo there did well not to get tracked out on that far side. Madeira again. And away. Madeira, good support on her shoulder. Uses it well. Soft hands come in the end by Magatti, but not to be. Hunt wants to take it quickly. And England straight away back into the action. No, you're off the feet now. No. There was a foot in there. Holly Davidson, our referee, happy to let play continue. Sorry, no. Hold. Zoe Harrison, crossfield kick, forcing their Sillery to turn and gather. McKenna chasing up in her face, as is Kildan and Aitchison. Had to be a Ford and Abby Ward who arrived to sort things out, but she got herself in a real tricky position as she landed on the floor there. Yeah, I think at the moment Italy aren't helping themselves. Every kick return or when they get in turn of a ball, they're ending up in the middle of the field, which is really difficult for them to get any shape from. When they're playing to an edge, like we've seen in them earlier phases, no. it's making it much easier for their yeah. tens and their forwards just to find a little bit more shape and so to start to play some of the ball. Beatrice Ragoni, who just kicked out the ball on that far side. She uh, was actually playing fly half last week, which surprised a lot of people. It allowed uh, Elisa Dinka to play at 12. He really raised a lot of eyebrows because she was very impressive. High tackle rate numbers there from Italy. That's how much time they're spending defending at the moment. But Tony. Oh. Nothing's going their way. Cleal, Kabea. Penalty advantage as well to England now. 
Thompson. Still got advantage. Brown. Cleo. She was trying to do. She's done that out the back pass a couple of times. Thirteen. Thank you. Thirteen off feet. Well, the one there against Michaela Sillery yeah, needs thanks, to Emma. keep those feet on the floor. I think the, the other thing that Italy have to be careful of at the moment is where their tacklers finishing. Because yeah. England are getting so much momentum, the tacklers ending up in the breakdown when, the, in that, when Natasha Hunt wants to move the ball. And I think, for it's me, yeah, we want the referees to clear that in tackle area. At the moment, the Italy have been really lucky line that line Holly Davison hasn't done anything different about that. We're just seeing there the... Uh, Sarah McKenna dot down that. It was like quite a long time ago that she got that try. It was just three minutes in. England, let me camp down in that corner once again. Italy have never actually beaten England in all the times they've met with each other. They have come within single digits before, but it's pretty much been a, a Red Roses show the whole time. The question marks over Italy is if they actually get to play enough test rugby on a regular basis. They had that European campaign to qualify for the World Cup in the autumn, which gave them test time. But of all the sides playing in the Six Nations, like they are the ones who haven't had any rugby since. And it's tough, isn't it? As the international game moves on and teams get better, the okay. only way that happens is by playing. So these girls, yes, they're playing club rugby. But ultimately, there's, there's kind of no replacement for international test experience. And as much as Italian club rugby has started yeah, again, it really was impacted by the pandemic. A lot of credit has gone the way to uh, the Rugby Football Union in England for keeping the Women's Premier 15s going throughout that period as Poppy Cleo peels round. Matthews. Helena Rowland. Hunt, far side, nice, back inside to McKenna, off her wing, busy. Ward. Clear. Hunt, Galligan. Back towards the middle. There's Davis. Spun out once again, Gallagher sniffing the line. On side. Matthews, she's a strong woman and she's a scoring woman. Five tries now for England. They scored six in the first half against Scotland. They could be on course to do the same. No, Alex Matthews is known for this, her carry ability, but what I really enjoy is how low she gets. You watch that initial carry, there's no opportunity for anybody to get underneath it from an Italian perspective. And then she gets a little bit of a nudge from, I think, Shauna Brown and Kabea, and they just give her that power over the line, but it is her starting height that makes that so difficult for Italy to defend. Thanks, Eric. That was Matthews' fifth carry that she managed to get over and get that one. Three from five with the boot now for Zoe Harrison. As England have now gone over the 30 point mark. They're desperately trying to keep up with the clock at the moment. And it says a lot for Simon Middleton, the riches that he has, particularly in the back five of the pack, to have a player like Alex Matthews as well. Such fierce competition there's going to be for him to select a squad for that World Cup particularly if he is going to be limited to around 30 players. There's going to be some really big 
significant players left at home. There really is, and, and there's some massive battles, like we've talked yeah. about that back row. I think we earlier named around 10 players in the mix from that, that uh, back three combination as players again. We bottom? haven't seen the likes of Jess Breach feature yet. Yeah. So I think, okay. like we've talked about, if you're, you're probably hoping that there's going to be a bigger squad. Well, a little bit of chuffing and changing here going on for Time Italy. You can see on your screen they're coming on Vicini. It looks like uh, Batoni has had to come off. And Melissa Batoni will be a big loss. 66 caps to a name. If they need all the experience they get. Vicini only on her fifth cap today. The front hold. Oh. Yeah. Oh, no. Big take in the air there by Ostuna Manuzzi. No, the next winger later on. Yep, ball's out. Stefan. Popped off out towards the far. Stefan. Popped off out towards the far side again. Perhaps one pass too many there for the Italians. They lose ground as a result. It's back. It's back. back the Warning against Cabea there. Tornesi. Off feet, no five, leave it. Medea. Pops off to the new woman on the field. Vicini. She can hook, she can hook. You can hear just uh, Holly yeah, Davidson doing a little bit of coaching almost as she goes along. Nice of the referee to help out. Good meters made by Zoe Harrison in that last passage. Clear. Hunt. Roland. Cornber on the floor. Matthews to Brown. The Italian player there that was lying on the wrong side, not getting in the way, so happy for the play to carry on through Thompson. Well, it looks like Italy just managed to nope. scrag Natasha Hunt there. As soon as you lift that ball, you're good to be tackled. She will not yeah, be happy was. about that from her England forwards. No doubt Natasha will be getting stuck into them now. The fact that a uh, referee is happy that once the ball's lifted, but I think probably from Natasha's perspective, she will want a nicer platform Good. to be able to move that ball from. How weird is it to call her Natasha? So weird. <laughs> <laughs> I, had, I had to concentrate as well. well. There she was, just getting caught there around the ankles. Natasha had okay, spoken a lot yes. about rejoining the England setup. Yeah. How strange it's been, oh, how Sam here. Middleton wants her to come and just enjoy her rugby, not be a leader. She said she didn't speak in a meeting for a long time, but uh, Middleton did reassure us she has spoken up this week. Yeah, and I think it's really good for Natasha, you know. I think like we've talked about it, there was a lot of pressure on her and we see the best of her when she's just enjoying her rugby and she's able to play with a smile. And that's ultimately what England want, the best players playing at their best. Taken quickly off the base there by Giordano. Nice take here. This is what they wanted to see. Rigoni. She's going to go straight into Kill Dunn. Gets the pass to Stefan. Back on their feet, wanting more. The best attacking play we've seen. Slow ball, but held. Muzzo. Medea waits. Goes for the crossfield kick. McKenna calls the mark straight away. And the Italian threat passes. Stay on side. Push on side. Is she 10? Not and 10. straight away, Italy, not 10. Not From 10, absolute 10. magic to heads down in the space of 10 seconds. Um, like but I mean, if we go back to that initial break, it's that girl we talked oh. about at the beginning, Beatrice Rigoni in the forefront okay. of it. You know, it's a lovely little tip. It's a great line. She's nice and flat. She's aggressive at England's defensive line. And then once they're in behind, but I just think you just want them to take a breath. You want them just to keep have a little bit of composure and see if they can build an opportunity at that point. Well, that is the half. It's all been about England. Five.
enjoying that sunshine. Perhaps a little bit chilly there in the shade, but we've seen plenty of uh, shirt sleeves rolled out on the other side. Just perusing those stats at half time. Meters made by Italy, just over 200. England over 650. Absolute meter monsters, the Red Roses. Northern Italy, the hosting venue for this one as uh, the Red Roses look to try and make early inroads. I just have knock on Eric. Davis. Thank you. Mark Davis, vice captain for the Red Roses today. Off a lightning hooker, did spend a bit of time at Worcester. Look at those quick hands. Thompson just trying to wind through the gears there. Hunt, Cornbra. Off feet. Harrison. Brown. Big hands off by Brown. That's her trademark. Just trying to find a way into that Italian 22 at the moment. The blue wall of Italian shirts just trying to hold their ground. And away blue. Fascinating to know what uh, Andrea Dijan Domenico actually said to them at half time because it's still England. Here comes Thompson. She's rattled through there. That's a brace for Thompson. And six tries now for England. And that's what we wanted to see in the opening start of this second half. First half was a bit slow, but what a lovely ball from Sarah McKenna. That delay on the pass just to let the Italian defender bite and come forward. She goes into the seam and just puts a really lovely flat pass. And you're not going to stop Lydia Thompson from 10, 12 metres out. Yeah, Lydia Thompson, her 51st cap today. Interesting how both her and Sarah McKenna, certainly the more experienced players in that back lineup. Really shoring things yes, up. I've been very sure. assured on the ball. As uh, we've got a change of kicker now, it's Helena Rowland's turn. Be interesting to see as well from this is whether this was always pre-planned, whether um, like so is not kicked badly, whether it was just a case of obviously having both on the pitch. You have an opportunity to do this. Well, not the first kick that Helena okay. Rowland would have wanted. Six. That was the finish there Perfect. by Thompson. As you say there, Katie, interesting that we've got a change of kicker. And we touched on it in the first half, the importance. And it's something that when Gary Street was the England head coach, he really started off in making sure that as many of his England women could kick as possible. Yeah, it's huge. And I think all we've seen is the growth of that in the women's game. You know, you look at that England backline now, the majority of that backline can click and can kick very confidently. And that's what you want when you're under pressure. Players that have a run pass kick game. Yeah, good. We just saw that an Italian player down. I get confirmation of any Italian changes as they happen. Roland. Roland stood there in that first receiver position. You see that Vicky Fleetwood is on now. Sadi Kabir is off. If we get any information through from the England camp about changes, we will let you know. Brown. Okay. Advantage. Penalty then Attack to off. England. Number eight. High from the Italians, warning there against Giordano. I thought Sadia Kabea had a very good 40 minutes as well. I know we talked about Marley Packer last weekend and that uh, had trick of tries, but I think you know you, you really want to have an abundance of seven and sevens in that in that group because that's what England have been short of. Um, but Kabea went well, and now it's a great opportunity to see Vicky Fleetwood come and have some international minutes. Uh, put them on the line. Well, that was Zoe Harrison just taking the ball into that contact before. Slightly high. Harrison. Roland. Harrison again. She was really flat to the line there. 
anyone's ball. It's Magatti who got there. Another England penalty. Tackle without the ball. And Italy do have to be careful here. Although they're on the wrong side of the scoreline, that doesn't mean they're not going to get a card. No, and it, it's certainly what Italy definitely don't need. I think what is, is more pleasing from an Italy perspective is that they're getting more success with their it's defensive line. line speed, especially when England are coming on that second phase. Apparently, maybe a little bit harsh there. Holly Aitchison wasn't really touched. Ward then takes in the air. Abby Ward there of the Bristol Bears, the real line out leader for England. Interesting how Harlequin's Rosie Gulligan has come in and she's really put a hand up there. Said she's happy to lead the line out if required. Okay, once. Warning there for Hunt to use it. Aitchison running back towards the support. Fleetwood, Matthews, Cleal, Harrison, Rowland, back inside, McKenna. Another penalty advantage here. Davis. Zoe Harrison with a little dink through, pushed back by the Italians. It's still going to be England's advantage as it's pushed out into the wide channels. Matthews waiting. Cleo, well tackled there by Tornesi. Some huge tackles coming in there by the Italian forwards, but Holly Davidson has eventually seen enough, brings it back. Keep an eye on Mohunt there. It's their penalty. 11 not rolling. Well, we're keeping an eye on Poppy Clear at the moment. Looks like she took a bit of a knock there. She's still down on the ground yeah. and uh, she's holding on to her leg. And you have to say, it is very rare to see Poppy Clear stay down like that. And that's the thing. Uh, sometimes in a, in a team sport like rugby, you have players that sometimes maybe stay down for slightly longer and you give them a bit of a minute. But when somebody like Pop stays down, especially for the period of time, yeah, you would be a little bit concerned. I think it came from that chop tackle that you were talking about from Tanezi, where she really got up the line and just hit Poppy low. So hopefully it's just a dead leg. Well, there'll be a lot of Red Roses fans who'll be concerned. Any injuries at the moment? They'll be looking at the timeline and the build-up to the World Cup. And you can see Sarah Hunter just at the bottom of your screen there, starting to warm up, run up and down. I mean, 15 carries and we're on 47 minutes from Poppy Cleo. That's stunning. And the thing that I think probably Poppy doesn't get enough credit for is the carries that she makes. She doesn't make these carries in big open space. Generally, it's always in that tight, hard yard area. It's coming into your guards and bodyguards really tight around that breakdown so actually that these carries are big attritional carries there you go that was the moment there i mean it it was a lovely low tackle there by giordano and it's what they need to do more of for me you know that just stops momentum she stopped poppy dead and we know she's been one of england's most best carriers well you can see there from the body language of poppy cleo it's not looking perhaps as serious as it first did a little bit more magic tape perhaps is required. They're not going to get out the magic spray as we just uh, wait there. And the question is here, Katie Daly McLean, is is it a risk leaving Poppy Cleal on if she is injured there when you've got someone like Sarah Hunter waiting? The likelihood is if the medics are happy that this is just um, kind of a, a bit of a, a soft tissue issue, they're, they're not going to risk Poppy at this point, especially like we say, the score's 36 nil. She's had a really solid game, maybe give her five, six more minutes and then I would have thought we'll see Sarah Hunter anyway. Possibly Poppy was just a bit tired, to be fair. <laughs> Can't wait to hear Poppy Cleal's version of events when we do get to her, but th th that, that leg injury doesn't seem to be causing her any problems. As she walks along, it was actually strapping to her, her knee well, that she received rolling. there. We come back for the penalty, which seems like a long time ago now. Italy yeah. not rolling away at the breakdown. And I think when we touched on that kick and tar, I think yeah. that swap has been deliberate. You know, Helena's now kicking to line as well. So just an opportunity for England Drop to see one, something three. different. Drop. Good. 
Mall. Goes in then. Matthews takes it. Classic England move this. That's collapsed though. That can't go over. Around the corner from Davis. That's short. They need a scrum half. No one's there. Brown. Well wed by the Italians. Needs to come backwards. Hunt. Popped off ball out wide. Cleal. And he's not causing her any problems at the moment. It looks like it's been held up. It was Ward that tried to go, but they're going to come back for an Italy offside. Like we've touched on, I think Italy are living on borrowed time here. This has been multiple penalties in red zone. And for me, I think we're looking at Holly Davidson maybe at least talking to the Italian captain at this point. As of yet, she hasn't done so. I didn't see it. Well, England have got replacements that they are ready and raring to come on, but not at this juncture. This time they go long to the back to Galligan. That spun round quickly, looking better. Touchdown, Vicky Fleetwood. Try. Italy have absolutely no idea at the moment how to stop this big white machine that is just rolling at them continually and i think it's how quickly england form as soon as that ball's on the ground everybody's in a good body position the ball's already moving forward and as we see on your screen italy are just being left behind some of their players haven't even engaged in that and when you've got a pack as, as dominant as england you need everybody in behind to try and stop that Vicky Fleetwood there. She's always been regarded as one of the best trainers for England. If you speak to any of the England team, you say, who's the fittest player? They always say Vicky Fleetwood. She's had some terrible injuries that have really sort of held her back in recent years. She actually played hooker in the uh, 2014 World Cup final. Found more often now in the back row. Although, again, a useful player to have around because she still has that skill. Yeah, fascinating. You think if somebody like Lark Davies ends up getting got a yellow for any reason with Fleetwood um, on the field you've got a great replacement for somebody to come and throw so I, I think a skill set makes her really valuable to this pack oh right there on the edge comes back inside Ward Wait, wait, wait. Go. Gathered nicely there by Giordano. Manages to give it back then to Ostuno Minuzzi. Stefan. Popped on the near side. Muzo, who plays her rugby at Villorba. Possibly been slightly frustrated with the ball she's been delivered on the wing. Soft hands came in by Duca there. Ball is uh, available for Italy. The English defence is suffocating Italy, but mistakes at the breakdown and a penalty opportunity to set up a platform. That penalty definitely helps Italy there. I think they probably just need to be a little bit more direct with England. The wider the play, the easier it is for England to keep getting lines to make these real dominant shots much better kick as well from uh, Rigoni there and that's what Italy need to start to try to build a bit of pressure on this England side well Brown is coming off the field then for England coming on in her place is Sarah Byrne a hunt, good run from her, burn straight onto the field, into the action. There's Maud Muir also on the field of play. It's still Sarah Byrne going. Oh, what a score by Byrne. Less than a minute on the field. What a force of nature. No surprise she had Maud Muir and Connie Powell in support. Fresh legs, fresh ideas, <laughs> more tries. And that was all made for me by Natasha Hunts Reed at the overthrow. You know, at nine at the back of the line now, she picks off that overthrow from Italy. And, and like you say, you don't think you're going to be hitting your uh, tight head prop in that situation who's going to go the rest of the 35, 
maybe 60 metres when you talk to Sarah Byrne. But what a finish <laughs> and being actively supported by Maud Muir. And, and that's what Simon Middleton will want to see. He want to see his, be- his bench make an instant impact. And Sarah Byrne has certainly gone and done that. Ireland does get one on the score sheet. One from three now with the boot as England start approaching the 50-pointer on the scoreboard. Sarah Byrne, when she actually played England under 20s, she was actually a back row player. She moved into the front row. She's never really looked backwards since. That was her 17th try she scored now. She does it all the time at Bristol. If you ever watch the highlight reels from the Premier 15s at the weekend, she frequently makes it. Harrison, Ward. Hunt, Muir. Just confirmation on your screen there of the changes to the English front row. Tackle, release, release. Yeah, good, thanks for it. Roland. That one's gone straight out. A a mistake there. Just talk us through, Katie, the the difference in styles and plays between Helena Rowland and Zoe Harrison. We are seeing both of them slot in in first receiver in different positions. Yeah, I think for me, Zoe is definitely starting to nail that tactical understanding and has a phenomenal kicking game like we saw in the autumn and we're seeing here today. I think Helena is definitely more of a run in 10. She wants to be in wide open spaces. The assist she put in for Lydia's try, that's where Helena's more comfortable. But the beauty of playing them at 10 and 12 is that um, the way they can just drop in and out of that first receiver role, it, it's perfect for the way England want to play. Well, that was the hunt break and offload then to burn. Just the speed for a tight head, stunning. But also, that's 50 metres. It's not like she's doing that over 10, 12 metres. And I think you've got to give Sarah Byrne credit there. That is a that is a long way when you're a big, strong, slightly heavier girl, shall we say. She moves it very, very well. But just going back to that kind of Zoe and, and Helena relationship, I think for England, probably what we need to, to firm up is who was your 10 and who was your 12, who was running the game, and then who was kind of okay, more of on. your assist in that situation. I think for me, that's the, the next step in the evolution of this pairing. Paul comes on then by the Italians. Vicini currently playing hooker for them. Medea, oh, who was that? Aitchison just waiting, landed in her bread basket, didn't have to do anything. Harrison there has to pick that one off off the floor. Was that you, Gabriel? Hunt. Stefan is scurrying back there into the 22 to gather, and the white shirts just surrounding. They're circling like sharks. And Rosie Gallagher took a big thump there to bring that one down. Loose ball backwards, Tornesi. On side right. A little bit of support arrives in the farm yeah. of Giordano. Still Italian ball, but it's slow and in the wrong end of the field. Not in clear. Stefan is stuck. Slap the ball out of hand. Well, someone had a little hand in there. It was a poppy cleal. No, when they're going to floor. And those are the ones that they call coach killers. You know, England have done a great job to pressure, turned over the ball, and all the pressures on Italy to there to exit. Okay, send them on. Well, you can see that the Italian bench waiting to come on. Sara Baratin there is the standout one, wearing 21. 103rd cap for her today. She joins the field alongside Valeria Federighi. She'll come into the second row. And the more regular captain, Manuela Falan, who many would have expected her to start today. We're told it's just rotation that she was actually dropped. She'll no doubt go into the fullback position. I think there was a few changes there for England as well. 
Natasha Hunt making her way off the field. You can just see on the left-hand side of your screen in that last shot, you can see Lucy Packer on. Yeah. I've said this before, I always think that spray, it, this the noise, it sounds like it's someone's doing it having their hair done in yeah, yeah. hairspray, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, but it's magic spray. Magic spray. Very cold. Very cold and has a bit okay. of magic in it. Perfect. Okay. Time on. Cures all things. I'm not sure it's going to cure this score line for the Italians. We'll make that line out any better because Byrne read that beautifully. Ward, this is such quick ball from England. They want it again, fast. Packer, Harrison, spun out to the far side. It's McKenna. Kill Dunn going in for the dirty work. No, They're going to get tired off the player. Italians. Saw the face there of Sana Badatin, as if to say, really, me, never. Harrison, Matthews, Packer, Pau. <laughs> Holding on the floor there. Italy get it back. And this has been an onslaught by England now for the last uh, four or five minutes. And Italy have weathered the storm. They really have, and Maggie touched on it in the studio at uh, half time, just about the, how costly these turnovers have been for England. Italy have taken, I think that's probably five now in around the attack and 22 situation when you would be expecting England to capitalise on them. And it's just, we're just not getting their numbers right there. Connie's got a little bit isolated. I think it's Flito and maybe Abby Ward. They're just slightly arriving too late. And Italy have done a fantastic job of getting over the ball, but also holding their own weight. By Fleeto, we mean Vicky Fleetwood. Again, with the nickname, sorry. <laughs> you know them so well. Ball comes away for the Italians. Oh, what a great run there by Tornese. Romagnac flyer in the second row and wanting more. Popped off ball coming through Baratine. She was the first Italian woman to make it to 100 caps, the scrum half on the field now. Unable to get that last pass away through Sillery, they'll come back for the scrum. But those little flashes of play we saw from Italy, when they can get the ball in hand, they can get their handling game working. That's what we saw against France that was so exciting. They just haven't really been able to put in place today. Yeah, and that's it. And a lot of it has just come from their unforced errors. What a great line that is. She gets, looks for the offload, isn't on, good support. And then we, Italy get in behind England. And as soon as you're in behind, that's when danger. And Italy, for me, just need a little bit more composure. Because that unforced errors that just give England possession again. Crouch! Green! Bind! Well, it's down on, on the, the side. side closest to the cameras. What are you seeing, Dorian? Yeah. Okay. Okay, better bind from you. Yeah. Well, both sides just going to be asked for a better bind by the sound of that exchange. Worth mentioning that uh, next week is actually the 31st anniversary of England and Italy meeting for the very first time back at the 1991 World Cup. Now officially recognised by World Rugby. Crouch! It's the first World Cup for women. Bind! There's an exhibition of all of, our, all of the World Cups that Set. have been in the women's game at the uh, Rugby Museum at Twickenham. OK. OK, this side is now good. Yes? Same? Yes. Same? OK, let's go, girls. Quick reset. Holly Davidson just wants everyone to get back underway again. How many World Cups was it for you, Katie? Three? Played in three and went as an NPR to 2006. NPR, non-playing reserve. Well done, yeah. Thank you. Sometimes I pay attention. <laughs> Did you have a, a favourite or is that a stupid question when you won one? Uh, yeah, I mean, that obviously winning one was pretty good, but 2006 with no pressure was also quite a nice environment in Canada. 
another final not to be for England on that occasion. As Kilt Dunn just takes on the ball, makes a good 10 metres. Cleal, nice work with Matthews. Here she comes, still Alex Matthews. Drags along about three Italian players with her, Packer. Alex Matthews has carried a lot of ball along her and Poppy Cleal. We have uh, checked in with okay, the England okay. team. Worth Send mentioning that Sadi Kabea, she uh, didn't actually come off injured. It was always uh, a plan for Vicky Fleetwood to get the game time in Italy. We saw there one of the doctors just having a chat with Lucy Packer on your screen. Okay, time off. I think it's Holly Aitchison, actually. Yeah, good yourself. Another change good then yourself. for yeah. England. Ellie Kildun yes. makes her way off the field and a, a chance to see Emma yeah. Singh in an yeah. England shirt once yeah. again. Only made her debut last week against Scotland. Marianne, picture on your side of the last scrum. You're involved in a lot of the Premier 15s in your performance uh, director role at Sale Sharks Women, Katie. What have you made of Emma Singh? There's been a lot of calls for her to uh, get a chance to play. Yeah, I think it's a deserved opportunity, isn't it? I think, like you've said, there's been a lot of people who've been advocating for her in terms of how she's performed in, in Prem 15. So she's a very good goal kicker. She carries the ball back very well from a, a full-back position, and especially given how slight she is, she really fights above her weight. And I think it's going to be fascinating to see that journey for her. She develops like, into a, a red rose. Well, Italy just carry on then. A little bit more treatment for them. Just a little reminder then. We'll be back next week on Saturday. More TikTok Women's Six Nations action. It will be England against Italy. I think it's safe to say with the score line as it is that uh, both of those sides will be yeah, two no, from two. Someone will lose their O. <laughs> As we just see coming onto the field there, a debut for Francesca Barro. Extra viso player, now applies there, tried at Val Sagana. She can also play at hooker, so she's a really useful woman to have around this Italian squad. Not what we want to see the Italian players going off in a, that kind of discomfort. Nice to hear the applause as they go off the field. It's going to be on the five. Uh, well, again, that's been a very long stoppage just to make sure that uh, everyone is safe and ready to get off the field. We've been told for that match at King's Home next week between uh, England and Wales, there's over 11,000 tickets already sold, so on course for a sellout. Crouch! Find! Set! Well, a real lull in proceedings at the moment as uh, these front rows sort themselves out. You need to get a longer bend, you need to get off her shoulder. Yes. It's not boiling hot in Italy today. We were told that the temperature was around 10 or 11. It felt a lot hotter perhaps in Edinburgh last week, but does it add an extra layer to how the teams approach it with this being a spring tournament now? I think so, yeah. I mean, haven't only played in more of a kind of a, a winter tournament. I think for the, especially for the, the, the front rows, it does, it does change that a little bit. Well, the connection's not working there for the Italians. Packer. Cleal. Some big names still on the bench for England. Sarah Hunter and Emily Scarrett still yet to appear. Will they appear at all? Harrison, back inside to McKenna. Cleal. Cleal and Matthews have been had some lovely link play, always knowing where each other are. Ward. Muir. Wait for this one. England have made over a thousand metres now in this game. Italy have had to watch every single one of them. Advantage, not rolling. 
Packer to Cleo. Popped off to Muir. Number three. Harrison. Ward with the long pass out wide. Singh is there. A debut try for Emma Singh on her second cap. It's been a bit of a break, but that's now nine on the score sheet for England. Yeah, I think after that stoppage, and, and again, for me, the most frustrating thing, I suppose, if you want to be a neutral, is just Italy compound their errors by not exiting that scrum, but England forwards went really hard to work there. It's, uh, and England have got, they've got a lot of the bouncers okay. today, haven't they, in that okay. situation. That ball from Helena probably isn't yeah. um, to anybody specific, but it's sat up, it's Beautiful bounced into Emma Singh's hands and she gets a walk in untouched. But a lot of the hard yards prior to that were done by yeah, England pack, you. you know, Poppy Cleal, Alex Matthews, that uh, we've talked about for the majority of the 65 minutes, just making it really, really hard for Italy to fold and to get off the line and, yes. and pressure this England back line. Roland will be happier with her kicking from those last two attempts at sticks. Two from four now. <laughs> Helena Roland uh, came from rugby league originally. She ended up playing with now what must be one of the most famous uh, young girls' sides we've seen in Welwyn. The Welwyn girls' side of about five years ago featured. Helena Rowland, Zoe Harrison and Hannah Bottoman. And although Hannah Bottoman now plays prop, we're reliably assured she was a centre then. Can you imagine running at that lot in your teenage years? Impressive stuff. Packer. Burn. You could feel that one from wherever you're sat watching this. Harrison. In front, hold. Roland, hold. high one into the air. Who's going to get underneath it? Baratin. Astuno Minuzzi. Solari, quick pass out towards this near side. Furlan. Big push going forward by Puccini. Medea. On feet. Well, the warning there against the Italians that they've made the changes, but they just at the breakdown Number in particular, they really struggled. The penalties are racked up against them as well. I, I thought Abby Ward was lucky there, but actually, like uh, Holly's said, then she's done it for the extra roll because actually Abby's hands were on the ground, but just because a jackal was in place, the opportunity was there yep. for England to get the turnover. Okay. England have been rewarded for that. This was the ruck. 13. No cards so far in this fixture. Both sides have managed to hold no. on to a complement as 15, as there she is. Emily Scarrett <laughs> enters the field. Time on. As uh, Holly Aitchison makes way. Emily Scarrett oh. currently on 49 tries for England. She's also closing in on her 100th cap as well. This outing for her today is number 98. Big milestones approaching. She would have already reached them if it wasn't for that injury at the start of the season. Packer, Harrison. Nice touch through. There's two women on it. It's Scarrett for 50. Kill check. They're going to go and look at it, but Emily Scarrett comes on, reads that beautiful put through by Harrison, and she's got 50 in the locker for England. No doubt she would have demanded that of uh, Zoe Harrison, that little worm no, kick through, the type of girl that uh, Emily Scarrett is. But, I mean, again, it's... Italy infringe at the line now. England have got plenty of advantage, have got nothing to lose, but what a lovely weighted kick that is by Zoe Harrison. Great line. I mean, the queuing up, there's Emma Singh, there's Helena Rowlands there, fresh, scazzy, 
beats them to it all. But it, for me, it's the weight of that kick. That is such a hard skill to thread through defenders that are coming across you and actually drop that into a space. So well done, Zoe Harrison. That is a, an absolutely lovely kick. They're going to have a look. Just checking a potential takeout off the ball. Well, it's taken yeah, a long time, right. but if the kick hasn't been taken, the officials still have the right to go and yeah, take a look at it. Our television match official okay. today is Eric Gauzin of France. And they're looking to see if Could someone's be right been taken out the off the ball. Yeah, I just see those, those two players running back to yes, get the ball. Exactly. Yeah, so I'm happy. Yeah, Looks absolutely. like it was Price Emma stands. Singh and Sillery. Sillery's appealing that she was held. Yeah, good, thank you. It looks like she was almost tripped. Is Holly Davidson happy? Yes, she is. Well, the biggest scoreline between these two sides was when England actually uh, beat Italy back in 2008. It was England 76, Italy 6 that day. It would take a, a very impressive closing 12 minutes to actually uh, beat that one, but they're not far off. <laughs> no, and I think we just want to keep seeing more of what it, them bright sparks from Italy, isn't it? Just their defence is going well. We just have to stop, they have to stop England's momentum. Packer then. Here comes Hunter, regular England captain, but it was uh, originally Cleal who was given the armband today. Knocked on Italy with the opportunity. Oh, it's going backwards. They're going to bring it back. You do just think with Thank Italy, you. they're oh. just not confident enough taking the ball into contact. The last pass just isn't on. And for me, I think sometimes they're forced a little bit, especially on turnover. England have a, a good defensive line. They've got a good space in between them. They're covering a lot of the pitch. I'd just like to see Italy be a little bit more direct, especially for the early Thank phases, you. just to try and suck some more of that England good defense in. Good. So actually yeah. when Italy are going more to into the wide channels they're not going against such a long England line we've spoken a lot actually about the World Cup and the build-up to this and uh, worth mentioning that the group that Italy go into at the World Cup is they've got Canada USA and Japan and you would argue that's going to be the tightest pool at the World Cup Japan will be a little bit of an unknown as England get the penalty at the scrum and collapse you were saying Canada, a lot of their players are currently flooding into the Premier the 15s. They're really using it as their training ground. I've had a few Italian players turning up in the Premier 15s, but perhaps uh, not as many as other nations. No, not at all. And I think what's going to be difficult for Italy is going to be the, the size and the, the, the packs of USA and Canada. You know, similar to England, you look at how much momentum England have gained from their forwards. Canada and USA are very similar to that. Harrison, options all over the park. Scarrett. No. Well, I think this might have been coming for a while. One of the Italian players is going. Oh, and it's a big one as well. Of all the players to lose, he did not want to lose Beatrice Regoni. Fair decision by the referee? Not really. I think so, yes. I think probably maybe slightly unfair on the player that's got the card, but as a, an accumulative account of penalties that Italy have given in and around their 22s and their red zones, it had to come at some point, yes. How many? So it looks like Italy are going to have to see out this with just 14 women on the field, and that's going to make an already tricky task that much more difficult. Not quite functioning there from the line out from England. It might look good no, on the scoreline for England, but they do have their flaws. They do make mistakes. There certainly will be work-ons after this. And away, wait. 
that ball slowed down by two of the more experienced players on the field there in the form of Hunter and Scarrett. Onside. Well, Italy, they're trying to play out of such a short area at the moment. Strip. Play on. It looked Plus, like it stripped. had gone forward. Strip by 11. But happy that that was taken out by England. Uh, blue on the light, and you do just light. question what the Italian exit policy is. I think because they get again, they're getting themselves caught in the middle of the field, which is making it really hard for a kicker to drop into a pocket. So in that situation, they've had to try and work their way to an edge. But just how many phases they're taking to get that is really causing them problems. Oh, 200 tackles by Italy. I mean, take a bow. They've mixed 36, but when you've got those kind of numbers, maybe you are going to miss a few. Packer takes her time, not in a rush. Harrison all backwards, crossfield kick. No, they're going to come back. 21, side entry. And another warning for Italy, already down to 14. Helena Rowland just rushes up there. Very keen to go up into the faces there. There's a little bit of treatment going on to one of the Italian players that they will just pause for. It's uh, Tornesi who thinks she's got a little bit of cramp there by yeah. the look of things. And she's okay. been a real force, you have to say, Sara Tornesi. She stood out the Romagna lock. She's been absolutely phenomenal, you know. In, in a game where people have made... The team as a whole have made 200 tackles. She had a phenomenal start at, the, at half time. You know, the, she made the tackle on Poppy Keel at 65 minutes, where she's just got out the line and chopped her. She's carried well, especially through the middle. So, a lot of Italy's best bits today have really come through that girl, and she's had a, an absolutely outstanding shift. Well, it might be a surprise it's taken this long, but we get to see Elisa Dinka come onto the field. She was a real firecracker against France last week. 21. Side of course, they're down to 14, so how she slots into that back line. She might have to be covering a bit more ground than perhaps she th previously thought. OK, one drop. Not a focus on power for this throw, and after the last one went awry. <laughs> Go long again. Gallagher can't take it, but Muir is there. Hunter. 132 caps for her today. Ward. Gallagher. And away. Hunter again, making herself available, knowing she's got those fresh legs. Big one again from Muir, the Wasps prop, 20 years old. Packer, they're pushing to the far side, surely there's numbers available. Finished by Sarah McKenna, that's another one for the Saracens woman. 10, 11 tries now for England. And I think that defensive toll has really started to take it has taken its toll, sorry, on, on Italy there. Like you say, they've made an excess of 200 tackles and it's just only so long they can live with England. England are constantly making ground. A really uh, unselfish pass there from Emma Singh to put McKenna in because I think she was pretty much over over the line there. But good straightening and, and McKenna literally just has to dot it down in the corner. Sarah McKenna has the job in the uh, England camp of uh, keeping everyone's morale up. <laughs> Social secretary. Apparently they've been playing bingo this week, I've been told. Sarah McKenna is very, very good at that as well. Some of the creative things that that girl came up with over lockdown were absolutely fantastic as well. And, and she really takes that role very seriously. It was balloon animals in the autumn, if my memory serves me well. Big chat was around the focus that the England captain Sarah Hunter spent making a giraffe and decorating it. Great kick there from Helena Rowlands as well from the touchline. Match and Zoe Harrison from the first half. There's Potty Cleal off the field. Uh, lots of ice on that knee.
Waiting for the restart from Italy. Does just land it on the right side of that 10 metre line. Outside. The lamb was there offering herself, but Barrettin arrived. Penalty for Italy. Number 20. England needs to be alive to Barrettin. Ferlan on her shoulder. Big run coming in by Sara Say. Ball is out, play on, ball is Look out. Look at that rocking from England. Oh, just knocked on at the last by Galligan. They had it's won it. It's an Italy restart. England have been phenomenal at the breakdown today, and I think that's probably what's rattled uh, Italy at times. They've not been able to really kind of control their own speed of ball because if they have, England have fired it, they've really counted, rucked it. So any opportunity where Italy maybe want to slow down the pace and get organised, England have really forced their hand. It's Veronica Medea there, the uh, Italian fly half. A, a one-club woman, always played at Colano. There's the happy, smiling face of Natasha Hunt, the TikTok Women's Six Nations player of the match, decided by our Italian colleagues, and what a comeback. Yeah, I mean, you couldn't have wished for it. She, you could, Natasha Hunt is one of the nicest people you'll meet in rugby alongside the likes of Sarah Hunter, so you couldn't wish for a, a return that isn't any more perfect than that. Well, Italy would like a scoreline that reflects some kind of points in their direction. Baratin. Hands, they go through to Duca, but... It's all been knocked on. Hunter and England just get ready to go again. They don't even blink an eye. They do knock on a ball, though. The first one was Italian, and we'll have a scrum. The decision for uh, Natasha Hunt to get that player of the match, just her support play, linking play. I think just the way she started the game, you know, England started with a real high tempo. The, the little spot for Sarah McKenna's opening try, just speed of ball, she just kept England moving and constantly was a change in direction of attack. And I just don't think that allowed Italy to settle. It certainly never allowed them to get off the line and, and squeeze England. You've got to say, Poppy Cleal also had a phenomenal shift as well. And both uh, Cleal and Alex Matthews heavily involved with carrying a lot of ball. That scrum from England. Oh, look at that. Sarah Hunter, that is her absolute USP. Roland. Still going from Roland on that far side. Eventually, she runs out of pitch. Touch. Eleanor Rowland now playing at Loughborough. She did have some time at Saracens. She won the Premiership with uh, Saracens back in 2018 before moving. There's Rosie Gallagher, Quinslock. Uh, are you in the line out? This likely to be the last thing we see. 14 Italian women going up against the 15 of England and England will want to make the last dent in front hold hold Madeir McKenna Passed all up. Singh manages to find Scarra outright to Thompson can she finish this off Dinka has a no it's a hat trick for Lydia Thompson that will be the last thing we see, a 12th try for England in one of the most accomplished, composed performances you'll see from women in a white shirt. What a wonderful try it was. It was well caught by Sarah McKenna, but the pressure Emily Scarrett was on, just to, she didn't need to do anything, she just needed to catch and give Lydia Thompson the opportunity. And we've seen Lydia do that many a time. Some of them at Sandy Park against France to win the game. You know, a girl that just knows where the touchline is, the pace of which she can travel, and she is so difficult to stop at that. Well, a hat trick then for Lydia Thompson, a couple for Sarah McKenna as well. The wings certainly playing their part in this performance. Four from six then for Helena Rowland.
That one to the right-hand side, but it doesn't matter. Look at this scoreline. 20 wins in a row now for England as they close in on that world record. Untroubled by the Italians today. They're two from two. It's Italy nil, England 74. Katie Daly McLean, there's always work ons, but that was impressive. Yeah, and I think what England will be pleased at was just the, the difference in the game from Scotland. You know, Maggie again touched on it. They made a lot more handling errors in that game, but today, everything just kind of went to plan more they were more accurate they were kept possession better i thought the the way they carried and the speed of ball of which they played with just never allowed italy really to get into the game and i'm sure italy will be disappointed with their performance as a group but i think you've got england give england a lot of credit for the way that they just didn't allow that to happen well that's it from us let's head back to the studio and sonia thank you to sarah and katie daly